Hi, I'm Jarrett. I'm the owner, machinist, and designer here at Possum Solutions, and today I want to give you a tour of my small hobby shop turned second full-time job. As with many younger folks who are now into CNC, I started with 3D printing. You know, 2015-ish, got my first 3D printer, designing stuff, got into Fusion early, you know, and uh, just started making stuff. I watched some this old Tony and maybe some uh, MIC CNC and decided I wanted to make stuff out of metal. So then I bought a lathe. It's just a little hobby lathe, you know, nothing special, uh, but I had it in my garage for a bit. Um, and, you know, then things kind of got out of hand. Yeah, so there's the Haas, but we're not there yet. Let's start with the Sharp. Spring into summer 2021, I bought this machine behind me here, Sharp 2412, um, with the intent to be able to make more parts, more accurate parts, and sort of keep this uh, hobby going at the time. Um, as I kept making more parts, moved into this space that has three-phase power and all that good stuff, uh, it turned into more than a hobby. Um, sort of turned into a second full-time job. Good thing and a bad thing, but it's definitely a, you know, a balance. Most of what I'm making is for the film industry. My main job is as a camera operator on movies and television. So I make a lot of camera accessories, cheese plates, other fancier looking cheese plates, mounts to mount things to the camera, and a lot of custom stuff for myself. As the business kept growing, I realized I needed more capacity. I got an awesome deal on this Haas DT1, and it's been a great machine despite some little repair issues. When I first got it, the board went out, had to change a sensor on the tool changer, but overall it's been super reliable and I've made a lot of good parts on it. I ended up adding probing to both machines and uh, I mean if you haven't used it probing is just fantastic. I'm really able to do a lot of work a lot faster by having the probe. Probing has been huge on both machines. It helps me set tools faster more accurately and helps me set work pieces faster and more accurately. But the biggest benefit has been on the Sharp. I'm sure you saw that really long probe tip there. It's actually intentional. It's a 125 millimeter long probe tip. And what it's going to let me do, it's going to let me reach on the pallet down past the vise and touch off to this surface here. The way I've figured it out right now is that after the robot loads the pallets, the probe comes in and uses a custom probing macro to probe all four corners of the pallet to make sure that both pallets have seated and we can run the program safely. The newest addition to the shop is this robot, affectionately named Flash by my wife after the sloth in Zootopia because it's, you know, not that fast. Uh, I went to IMTS last year and talked to the folks at Productive Robotics, um, realized that in order to gain some time back, this being a, sort of a part-time second job or whatever, I needed some more capacity. And so I figured I could make something work with this. Um, ended up finding a used one on eBay and buying it kind of just hoping that I'll make it work. And I have set up a, uh, a pallet pool on my Sharp 2412 um, that is able to do what I'm, I call fake five axis, basically. Um, so I have two zero point plates, one on the three axis table and one on the fourth axis, and the robot will move the pallet from one to another. And so I can do slightly more complex parts, um, you know, that might normally require a five axis. And I can do uh, right now seven runs on the pallet pool, but uh, soon it will be more than that.
as I'm sure many of you home shop machinists can relate, you know, working with 400 square feet isn't a whole lot. And so you have to get really creative when you start doing stuff. So I have my tools on my wall behind me and I also have, you know, tools on a little rack that I've built that's on top of uh, the toolbox there. And I also end up having to be really specific with how I use my vertical space. Lots of storage boxes, lots of bins. I end up keeping my screws in little storage boxes back here. And I actually end up keeping about half my scrap underneath in these boxes. As you can see, part of it is just getting machines, you know, close to walls, using the, you know, sort of the space, the, sort of the best I can. So, you know, even keeping more scrap bins under here. It, it's tight, but it works. It's a little hard to get a wide shot in such a small space, but it's about 18 feet in this direction and about 22 feet in this direction. Some other creative solutions involves a, an air dryer suspended from the ceiling, keeping extra way lube underneath the chip conveyor, and keeping plenty of things on wheels so we can access machine components. I hope you enjoyed the tour of my small shop. Overall, owning this shop and being able to make whatever I need to make for shows, camera bits and bops and custom adapter plates and whatever it might be has been uh, an incredible experience. I've learned so much and I've just barely scratched the surface of machining things. Uh, if you want to follow along, my Instagram is at Possum Solutions and I uh, you know, post stories and respond to comments and stuff. And if there's anything else you'd like to see in the future, please let me know. Thanks for watching.